Hello and welcome to this exam question walkthrough where I'm going to look at some multiple choice questions from the atomic structure topic. This is my third video in this series. Do feel free to download the questions from the description, have a go at them yourselves and then watch the video to see how you got on. This question is asking us about the electron configuration of a transition metal. You need to know that transition metals have an incomplete D subshell. So that's what we're on the lookout for here. So A has got an empty D subshell, so that's not a transition metal. B has got eight electrons in its D subshell. Now the D subshell can hold 10, so this is incomplete. There will be five orbitals in the D subshell. Three of them will have two electrons in each, but the last two will have just one electron in each of the orbitals, so this is incomplete. Whereas C has got 10, which means it's full, D has got 10, and in fact we've moved on to the P subshell, so that's definitely full, and we've moved on larger than that. In a test, of course, you'd stop at option B once you've found the right answer, and you'd save time for some of the later questions. This question is about the isotopes of bromine, which are found in equal abundance, and we're asked which statement is correct. The first one is about the ionisation energy and it says it's less for the lighter isotope. That's not true. The only difference between these two isotopes is the number of neutrons and ionisation energy depends on the nuclear charge and the atomic radius and the shielding, not the number of neutrons. So A is incorrect. B is also incorrect because atomic radius only depends on nuclear charge and shielding as well. C is the correct answer because when we add up the mass of C3H7, we get 43. If we add 79 to it, we get 122, and 81 gives us 124. So those are the two molecular ion peaks we would have. D is therefore incorrect, and it's incorrect because reactivity depends on the number of electrons, not neutrons, and they have the same number of electrons. This question is asking us which of the following ionisations requires less energy than the first ionisation energy of oxygen. The first option is sulphur. It's in the same group as oxygen, but it is lower down in the group, which means it's got a larger atomic radius, therefore more shielding, therefore much less energy will be required to remove that electron. So A is the correct answer. We'd move on here in a test, but let's just explore the others. B is the second ionisation energy of oxygen. Second ionisation energies are always higher than first. Nitrogen's outer electrons are in the 2p subshell and it is 2p3, whereas oxygen is 2p4 and it has got a pair of electrons in one of the orbitals and those electrons are easier to remove. Fluorine has got a smaller atomic radius than oxygen and a larger nuclear charge, so its ionisation energy will be larger as a result of this. This question asks us which of the following electron configurations of an element has a maximum oxidation state of plus 5. Now, oxidation state is linked to charge, so really this question is asking us which of these could lose a maximum of five electrons from its outer energy level to become stable. And so this is asking us which ones could, not which ones would. So which ones have got the potential to do it? So A has actually got seven electrons in its outer energy level, so technically it could lose seven electrons and that would give it plus seven. So A is wrong. B has got three electrons in the third energy level, so it could only become plus three. C has got five electrons in the third energy level, so it could become plus five, and this is the correct answer. D could in fact become plus nine because it could lose the 3d7 and 4s2. This question is asking us what the number of neutrons and electrons are for the iron 2 plus ion with a mass number of 57. So first of all, we need to look at the atomic number. The atomic number is 26 for iron, which means it's got 26 protons and 26 electrons when it is an atom. This is a 2 plus ion, which means it's lost two electrons and therefore it's got 24, which means C and D must be wrong for that reason. And then, since mass number is the number of protons added to the number of neutrons, the number of neutrons is the mass number take away the atomic number. So, in other words, 
57 minus 26, which gives us 31 neutrons, which means that A must be the correct answer. In this question, we're asked which of these pairs of ionisation energies are greater for Y than they are for X. So we need to consider each one in turn. So in A, we've got 1s1. And we have to assume that all of these are for atoms, not ions. So if it's 1s1, that means it will have only one proton. Whereas Y in 1s2 will have two protons, which means it will be harder to remove that outer electron from Y because there are two protons pulling the electrons and the electrons are in the same energy level and so have the same shielding, very, very little shielding. And so A is the correct answer. B is wrong because a P energy level is higher than S. C is wrong because we've got the pairing up of electrons in the P subshell, so those are easier to remove. And D is wrong because the 3S energy level is much higher than 2P, so therefore easier to remove. This question tells us that boron has a lower first ionisation energy than beryllium, and it asks us which of these four statements is the explanation why. So three of these are actually true statements, but not the reason why. So that makes this question quite tricky because they seem reasonable. And so we've got boron is a smaller atom than a beryllium atom. True, but that would actually give boron a higher first ionisation energy. B, beryllium does only have paired electrons in its full subshells, and that's true, but not the reason. C, beryllium has fewer protons than a boron atom. That's true, but you'd therefore expect boron to have a higher first ionisation energy, and it doesn't. So D has to be the correct answer, and that's because boron's outer electrons are in a P subshell, which have got a higher energy than 2S. That's a true statement. Here we're asked which of these changes requires the largest amount of energy. And they're all ionisations. Some of them are first, some of them are second. We need to look at where we're removing the electrons from. Helium plus has only got one electron. It's being removed from the 1s subshell, but it's got two protons. That's going to be a huge amount of energy because the electrons are really close to the nucleus. And in fact, this is the largest second ionization energy you're going to find. So A is the correct answer. B is much less energy because we're removing it from a 2s subshell. C is going to be much um, lower still because we're moving it from a 3s subshell even though the magnesium is 1 plus it's still going to be significantly less than a and d is going to be lower than a as well because we're removing from a 2p subshell rather than the 1s and that's got much higher energy so it's easier to remove here we're shown a graph of successive ionization energies for an element and we're asked to identify it from the pattern that we see as we move along the ionisation energies, they get larger, which is what we'd expect because electrons are more difficult to remove from a positively charged ion. But the first three electrons are kind of similarly difficult to remove, and then the fourth is much harder to remove. And what that means is that the first three electrons are in the same energy level, but the fourth is from an inner energy level. And so therefore, we've got three electrons in our outer energy level, and so this element has to be in group three. So we can rule out A and B because nitrogen and phosphorus are in group five. So we're choosing between C and D. We can rule out D because boron has actually only got five electrons, so it can't have an eighth ionization energy. So aluminium must be the correct answer. This question is telling us about photochromic glass and a reaction between copper ions and silver ions that makes that glass change colour and darken. And we're actually being asked about the electron configurations, not about the chemical reaction itself. And so we're asked which of the following electron configurations are correct. And they're all for copper, so it's worth thinking about copper's ground state as an atom. It will be 3D10 4S1 as its ground state because we fill the 3D before the 4S. And so that means we can rule out B because it's got too many electrons. And then you need to remember that you lose electrons from the 4S subshell before the 3D. So if we only lost one electron, copper 1 plus would be 3D10. So that means that D is the correct answer and we can rule out A. 
If we were to remove a second electron, the electron configuration would be 3d9. So again, C is wrong. Okay, that's the end of this video. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.